Okay, so this is my uh, shop that I have set up in a two-car garage. Um, there's only so much you can do with a 20 by 20 foot space. You know, it's a two-car garage. Uh, unfortunately, I have to park my wife's car in the driveway. My Super Duty truck wouldn't fit in here anyway, even if it was completely empty. Um, we're going to go over all this stuff, and we're going to talk about DeWalt. Uh, and some other things. That big ass fan, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about my uh, table saw from Grizzly. Uh, the one thing that we are not gonna talk about is my Can-Am. So uh, you'll just have to watch another video uh, about Can-Am to hear discussions about that. But we're gonna talk about several pieces of equipment and why I have what I have. I'm a contractor. Um, so everything you see in this garage is for my own personal use. Everything that I use on the job site is in storage. Um, I have a 10 foot by 30 foot storage unit that has all my equipment. I have pallet jacks and dollies and scaffold and ladders and on and on and on and on. There's just no way I could pack everything in this garage, but everything you see in here is what I come home to every night and, um, and work on the weekends. I do metal work. I do woodwork. Primarily I'm a carpenter by trade. But uh, let's just jump into it. And I'm going to go over some, some key things. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, just let me know at the end of the video. So let's start off talking about DeWalt. It's, uh, it's very obvious that I love DeWalt. Um, there are guys out there that are hardcore fanatics about their brand of tools. Some guys are Milwaukee guys. Some guys are Bosch guys. Some guys are Ryobi guys. Uh, everybody has their likes and dislikes about certain tools. Now, I'm not going to bash any other brand. Um, personally, I think that Milwaukee has some badass tools. They do have trade-specific tools for electricians and plumbers. Um, so as a carpenter, DeWalt works for me. Uh, do I think it's the best tool on, on the market? No, there's, there's other stuff. You can get into high, the higher dollar stuff, the fine, the fest tool. Um, for me as a carpenter, I like DeWalt. And once you start, once you get on a roll buying a certain brand of, of cordless tools, you got to stick with it. Why? Because you've got the batteries and the chargers. So every time you add another tool, to your tool collection, you don't want to have to switch chargers and batteries. You want to stay with the same brand. Um, so that's one of the pitfalls. I started with DeWalt and I just had to continue with it because I don't want several different brands of uh, cordless tools. So, you know, like I said, nothing against Milwaukee. I love their tools. They really do have some badass tools um, and they have some trade specific tools that I wish DeWalt had. Um, but Makita makes good stuff. Um, Bosch makes really good stuff. Uh, you know, there are other brands to go with. Rigid makes some, some good stuff. Um, but I happen to be a DeWalt guy. Okay, so this is my big ass fan. Um, uh, this is one of those essential things that I needed in my garage. Uh, I don't know if you can visualize this, but when I have that garage door open and it's summertime, that sun is right at about 11 o'clock, that afternoon sun. And this garage is not insulated. Most garages are not insulated in standard homes. And if I would have built this house myself, I would have put spray foam in this thing. But uh, I got to have some air movement. It, it can easily get up to 150 degrees in here. And I do have fans um, that are mounted to the ceiling. And what I did is I put them on a, a rotating base and they swivel and they're kind of loud. Now that may not sound loud um, because I'm filming this with a GoPro, but sometimes they're impractical. So I went ahead and, and pulled the trigger on this big ass fan and it's about six foot five tall and the base of it is narrow enough that this whole thing can fit through a standard doorway. And I love this thing. Now, this thing was not cheap, okay? This was, I think I paid $5,000 for it. Now, I know that there are guys out there that are thinking, Mike, you're out of your freaking mind. Okay, yeah, it was a steep price. If you go online and look at, at the fan prices on, on the big ass fan website, they are very, very proud of their product. And I happen to have 
uh, a bonus check and didn't have anything to spend it on. So I, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to upgrade to a better fan. What I had before this was a standard barrel fan um, that you would get like a tractor supplier, Home Depot. And it ran off a motor and a belt. And that thing was so damn loud. I mean, I couldn't even have a conversation because it just vibrated and resonated all this sound. It was just, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. And I paid like 600 bucks for a big one. Um, and I'll never do it again. So I pulled the trigger on this, um, kind of had some buyer's remorse until it showed up. I thought, man, what did I just do? I just wasted a bunch of money. But let me tell you something. Number one, this thing arrived by Motor Freight, an 18-wheeler, dropped it off. It was crated up and it was big they had to unload it um with the lift gate and when i first got it in the garage i could not believe the construction when i looked at it it is incredible this is what you pay several thousand dollars for this is all steel steel mesh powder coated it's got a texture to it um it's it's just absolutely beautiful from a construction standpoint they did not take any shortcuts this is what you pay for when you get a big ass fan you're you're getting the rolls royce of fans now this here for those of you that that don't have one of these this is not the motor this is just the controller unit the motor is actually in the hub i don't know if i can get this camera through there but that hub that's the motor Okay, and this is just the speed controller. So the motor is down in there. This thing is so quiet. It's all digitally controlled. Okay. And it is whisper quiet. And I mean that, whisper quiet. Even when it's on full blast, it has so much power to the point where you think it's going to fall over because it's, it's pushing itself over. It's like the propeller of an airplane. It's incredible. But one of the reasons I got this, like I said, it's so damn hot in this garage. Let me turn it up all the way. And it takes a few seconds for that thing to get up to full speed. And I feel like I'm in a, in a wind tunnel right now. I mean, it is so powerful. And this is what keeps me cool in the summertime because I'm a garage guy. I'm out here sweating my balls off and those two ceiling mounted fans that I have up there just are too loud. This is what keeps me cool. Now in the winter time, I'll load this on a trailer and take it to storage. So that way I don't have this big contraption in my garage that I'm not going to use during the colder months. But I have no regrets. Um, I would absolutely buy this all over again, knowing what I know now. Until you're standing next to one of these, you have no idea. You, you just don't have the appreciation for the technology, um, the overall construction of this thing, the ease of use. It's got locking wheels, and this thing is heavy. It weighs about 300 pounds. But again, uh, they have another model that is bigger than this. It's about eight feet tall. It's yellow. I think it's called a yellow jacket, something like that. Um, but this has a narrow base that'll fit through a standard uh, 30, 30 inch door. I think it's 27 inches and it's just shy of six foot five, which goes through a six, seven door. So I, I, I made the right decision because this is absolutely essential for my needs. And again, I'm a contractor. So, you know, there's certain times of the year where I'm just flush with cash and I'll either sink it into something uh, for for an upgrade inside the house. You know, I put my wife a wine fridge and we put hardwood flooring in. But sometimes I get to splurge on myself. Um, and this was one of those times where I thought, you know, I've got several thousand dollars. What would I like to have? And so I bought a fan and it has it has become critical for me to have that thing running in the in the late afternoon you know three four or five o'clock in the evening in the summertime and it's it's it'll lower the temperature in this garage by 20 degrees absolutely it, it really was worth it and it's so quiet um so if you go to the big ass fan website again i i, I don't have any affiliation with them they're not sponsoring me they don't even know i'm making this video but um you know just be prepared for some sticker shock but you get what you pay for and this was worth it Okay, here's my Dewalt air compressor. Um, it took me a lot of years to upgrade from a 
a cheap, crappy pancake air compressor, but I did it because I had to do some fencing repair and I have a, a framing nail gun and a, and a typical pancake compressor it really just wasn't up to the task. And not only that, there was a time when I had a sandblast cabinet and absolutely a pancake compressor is not going to have enough uh, air pressure or volume uh, behind it. So I went with, with this right here. Um, I bought this at Tractor Supply. I think I only paid, I don't know what it was, 350 bucks or $400, something like that. I don't remember, it was years ago. Um, and I've done some customizing to it. As you can see, I, I put some, um, there were some, some breathers on there to let air into the cylinders. And I actually put these filters on there uh, that I bought online. It does have a programmable uh, uh, element that I added to it. And what it does is it'll turn the machine on and off automatically at certain times to keep the air pressure up. It pretty much holds pressure. It's, it's pretty good. Um, got an oil-filled uh, gauge there and a secondary digital gauge. Um, and then I have an oiler uh, to keep my tools lubricated. So I'm real happy with that thing. It is kind of loud, um, but I'll tell you what, I've had other compressors, uh, even from DeWalt, they were just so overpowering. They were just too damn loud, and I'm really happy with this one. It seemed to be a, a good buy. Okay, so here's my table saw. As you can see, it's a Grizzly. Uh, it's the uh, G0690 model. And there were more expensive models that I could have bought. This one is only a 10 inch. Um, I really wish I'd, I would have had the money and the, and the space to go with a 12 inch. Um, but this gets me by. It does what I needed to do. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it. I love it. I actually made a slide. Um, the tabletop has held up real good. I love the fence. Um, there isn't anything that I could say that, bad about it. I mean, I love it. It did, when I hooked up my dust collection system to this thing, there were a lot of leaks. And what I had to do is I had to buy some of this magnetic stuff. It's it's actually, it's flimsy magnetic material. It's probably about a 16th of an inch thick. But when I hooked up my dust collection hose, air was being sucked in through these brushes that'll, that allow this, this um, 45 degree um, blade to move. And so I had to make a template and cut this out, and that stops the air movement from being sucked through there. And I don't know if you can see or not, but I, I also have some, some foam that I had to stick in between the base and the cast iron top. That also kept the suction uh, from, from losing air. And there's also another place. I actually had to put weather stripping all around this door that opens up because I was losing a lot of air. And now that I've done that, I have the most incredible suction. It's, it's just unbelievable. If I wave a piece of paper right here over my zero clearance uh, plate uh, and, the, and the dust collection system is on, it'll suck the paper right to it. There's so much air being sucked down through there and I get almost no sawdust. So the dust collection system that I have is actually a dust right and you can see it here. I like this because, again, I was limited to my space, and so I bought something that could be mounted on the wall, and I actually built a cart that also holds my my all my clamps, and it's on wheels, even though it's kind of permanently set right there. And I have a Cyclone system set up. Um, that is the Oneida air system, and then a Cyclone and a dust collection, and the hose goes up, and it goes, I don't know if you can see that, it goes up and over, overhead, and then down to here. So when I get ready to use my uh, planer, I just disconnect it there and the hose gets put on here because that thing throws out a lot of sawdust, a lot of chips. And the same thing with my uh, bench mounted disc sander. I can disconnect the hose here and connect it onto that hose, which runs under the cabinet and comes up right there. Now, I don't do that very often because I'm not grinding a whole lot of wood over here. It's usually just for metal that I use this thing for. But overall, this table has, is probably the, the cornerstone of my, of my shop. I work primarily in wood. And this table saw that I bought from Grizzly is probably the most bang for your buck table saw that you can buy. 
And I know there's guys out there that are going to say, why didn't you get a, you know, a, a, a better one? Why didn't you get a saw stop? Um, I think that's what they're called. Yeah, those things are high dollar. And sure, it's going to keep you from cutting your finger off. But you know what? I'm not a beginner. I'm not a rookie. And yeah, even though an old school like me can, can still cut a finger off if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, the chances of that happening are extremely low because I've been using a table saw for probably 35 years. So I'm very, very careful and safety conscious, and I don't need to have a saw uh, that costs three grand because I'm worried about cutting a finger off. Um, you know, I'm just very careful. So for me, this works. Uh, nothing, nothing against saw stop. I think it's a great saw. Um, it just didn't suit my needs. And there isn't anything about this saw that I can, I can talk down about. And I even got the, the rolling base at, at one point when I bought this saw, I pulled the trigger on the rolling base as well. Cause I thought I was going to have to move it around, but it's actually bolted in place. It's not going to move. There's my outfeed table. Now, if you notice, I've got this, um, vice mounted to the table but when i get ready to rip pieces of plywood i need the entire length this is only seven feet so eight foot comes out to here so i have to unbolt this it's temporary and that way i can rip a whole sheet of plywood and then i put this on you know i leave this on most of the time because i use this more than anything else i don't uh rip plywood that often but i have the ability to do it with that outfeed table. Okay, as you see, I've got another section of my garage here where I just got some shelving and I store some miscellaneous stuff. I wanted to comment on a couple of things. My DeWalt air movers or blowers as a lot of people call them. Um, you know, after years of buying the rigid blowers, uh, I finally found some DeWalt versions online and I bought them. Holy cow, these things are so so powerful um it puts those other blowers by by rigid to shame uh, these things are expensive uh depending on where you get them uh they can be anywhere from 250 to 300 dollars a piece um and i haven't used these yet i did test them out it throws out i think 1800 cfm um most air movers or blowers pull out maybe six or eight hundred but 1800 cfm that's a lot of air and i use them I do a lot of flooring and they come in handy. Um, my Porter Cable uh, floor mounted drill press. This is probably the Achilles heel of my garage. I hate this thing. Um, I'm sure Porter Cable makes good stuff, but drill presses is not one of them. Uh, this thing has a lot of flaws. One of the things uh, that I don't like about it is that it doesn't have automatic speed adjustment. I have to literally open this up and change the belts. It's kind of old school, um, but I wish I had an automatic uh, gear change where I didn't have to open anything up, a gear selector. Um, they do make those models, but they're a little more uh, on the high end. Um, this does have a keyless chuck that I put on. I like this. I spent good money on it, um, and, I, and I bought this because I thought by replacing that old keyed chuck that I was going to take the wobble out of my bits. Um, the spindle that's in here, it's just not, it's just not precision. Um, you know, I guess it gets the job done, but if I really need precision drilling to be done, I have to do it very, very, very carefully and very slow because it just it's just not, you know, I don't expect it to be like a CNC machine. I get it, but I have had other uh, floor model drill presses that, that put this one to shame. Uh, this was cheap. I got it at Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't remember. And it was only 300 bucks, I think. You know, you get what you paid for. For $300, I guess that's as good as I'm going to get. Okay, so this section of my garage here basically is... Um, storage cabinets. Now, I don't know if you if you if you can catch this or not. For those of you who know about cabinets, these are upper cabinets. They're only 12 inches deep, but a typical base cabinet is almost 24 inches deep. And if I would have put base cabinets down here, they would be all the way out to here. And I just don't have enough room. So those are also 
wall cabinets or upper cabinets. Basically, I took two by fours and made a frame. So I had a, a pedestal to set these on. And then I put a, a piece of white toe kick on there. And I went a little wide with the butcher block top. Um, I basically took a 24 inch wide butcher block top and cut a few inches off, which is actually my backsplash. So that works for me because I, I, I'm just limited to the amount of space um, that I have to work with in this 20 by 22 car garage. At some point uh, when I have my dream shop, I will get a base for this, a dedicated base that will be bolted to the ground, but this is where it sits for now. Um, and my disc sander, it just, it really bugs the crap out of me that I have a bench top disc sander. Uh, I kind of hate it uh, and nothing with Delta, you know, it has nothing to do with Delta. It's just a bench model disc sander just barely gets me by. I use it a lot and I would love to have a big floor model version, but it's big money and I just don't have anywhere to put it. Okay, so this is my Jet 8 inch variable speed industrial uh, grinder, buffer, whatever you want to call it. I love this thing because it's digital and I can turn it on. I can set the RPMs. It's whisper quiet. The base actually has a cooling fan down underneath of there and it cools the motor down. And not only does it have a 900, 1800 and 3600 RPM selector, you can actually dial it down or dial it up. So I really like that. Now it's, you probably hear the vibration quite a bit because it's not bolted down to this. And in this video that I'm shooting with a GoPro, it probably looks like those digital uh, numbers are, are flickering. And that's, that's just because this is being filmed. If you were looking at it like I'm looking at it now, there's no flicker to it. But I love this thing. I just wish I had a, a pedestal, a permanent pedestal mount for it. Okay, here's another thing that uh, I finally invested in. And I say finally because I went many, many years without one. And I always wanted one. Uh, this is a flammable storage cabinet for paints and solvents and whatever else you may have in your shop or your garage. And I knew I needed it from a safety standpoint. It's just that they're not cheap. Um, in fact, this is not even the top of the line version. There is a version that um, has self-closing doors. And when the temperature, if there's a fire in a building and these doors happen to be open, uh, there's, a, there's something that melts on the closing mechanism and they automatically, automatically close. Um, as you see, I got it from Uline. And they have different sizes. They have countertop models. Um, but I needed this full-size storage cabinet. And actually, I, I, I wish I had a second one. There's just no place to put it in this garage, though. Um, this is where I keep anything that's flammable, okay? Now, as everybody knows, contact cement, man, that stuff is flammable as hell. I mean, the fumes will get you high. Uh, spray adhesive, um, spray paint. I have goof off down there. There's my fuel for my for my uh, for my lawnmower. So anything that's highly flammable is in this cabinet. Um, uh, there's even butane in here, and there's there's other stuff. Um, again, I wish I had another cabinet. If I did, I would separate the rollers and brushes and 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 materials in a, in one cabinet, and then I would have the paints and solvents. Uh, dedicated to one cabinet, but I'm trying to cram everything in there and it's already pretty overloaded. Um, but I think every shop or garage should have one of these because there was a time when I would store all of my paints and solvents in those cabinets. And that's not a good idea. Um, they just weren't protected. In fact, I'm a smoker. I smoke a pack of cigarettes a day, unfortunately. That's just that's just the way I am. I have been a smoker for 30 years. So if you're gonna be smoking in your garage, you really need to have your stuff isolated. I mean, you don't wanna have anything out in the open um, where it could catch fire or fumes. And, you know, I try to be as conscious as I can, but this cabinet um, was really a good idea. 
I, I highly recommend it for anybody who's going to store any kind of solvents uh, or chemicals in their garage uh, that could cause an explosion or a fire. Okay, so let's talk about these DeWalt tool cabinets that I've got. And you can see I've got two of them. Um, these are the 42-inch uh, rolling tool cabinets that they actually no longer manufacture. I had the smaller ones um, for a while, and I got lucky uh, one Christmas. I went to Home Depot, and there were I walked in the contractor entrance, and there was three of these things sitting there. Um, and I came real close to buying all three. Of course, I don't know where I would have put it because there's no room in this garage for three of these. Um, but I bought two of them on the spot and I think I paid a really great price. I think they were 600 bucks a piece and they were fully assembled. There, were, there wasn't a dent or a scratch in them. They were brand new and I don't know why anybody else didn't jump on it before I did. I just happened to walk in at the, at the right time um, and I pulled out my credit card and, and they were no more than 15 feet away from the contractor checkout. I bought them all uh, or I bought, bought two of them. Um, they're really good. I, I haven't had any problems with them. Now, for those of you out there that, that are familiar with Lowe's, you know that Lowe's had a stainless steel version of a, of a rolling tool chest like this. And it was kind of gimmicky. It had a little mini fridge down there and it had a car stereo here with some speakers. You know, it, it was gimmicky. I bought two of those and I bought those back when they were like $3,000 a piece and the bearings were coming apart and in the slides the little ball bearings were falling out they were just complete junk um, now i understand these are made in china just like those stainless steel cabinets were it's all made in china um, so i have not had any problems with these um, you know i'm i like good stuff and although in the world of rolling tool cabinets this is by by far nowhere near the top of the heap um, if you're familiar with with high dollar mechanics tool chests that can run into 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars for a tool chest like Snap On. Um, there are some other ones. You know, those are totally customizable. They they build them for you, and then you know you uh, you apply for credit and you just make a monthly payment on it, just like you would a mortgage. But I don't have 10 tons of mechanics tools to store. I'm I'm a carpenter by trade, so this works for me, and. The outlet, the multi-outlet that was here, that's here now, I put that in myself because basically these cabinets did not come with one. Um, and I put the light up there on the top. And I just keep the tops open. Um, every drawer has something in it. Um, you know, I've got all kinds of stuff. I got more stuff than I know what to do with. This is my electrical drawer. Everything, Anything that has to do with electrical, I try to keep it all in this one big drawer. Uh, some of this stuff I, I don't use very often. Plenty of wrenches, more stuff, more wrenches. I need to go through these drawers and kind of clean them out. Um, look at this drawer. This is all my sanding disc and sanding discs and uh, cutting wheels and sandpaper. Yeah, I just I need to go through and clean these tools and do something with them. Um, just all kinds of stuff in there. It's all tools, it's not junk. And I have them sort of separated. I put all my sockets up top. I made this, this bracket. I don't remember where I got these from. I think I got these, believe it or not, from Harbor Freight. I could be wrong, but man, this is the best one because this is some kind of a PVC and these slide real easy on there. Um, I've had several of these and, and they either rusted if they were metal or they just broke. This is the best one. Um, and I don't remember where I got this. Um, this other cabinet here, same thing. I've got extra stuff in here. Some of these drawers are specific. I know where everything is. Here's my drawer of locks. Okay, I'm not a lock collector. But over the years, you end up with keys and locks. Look at all these keys. I have no idea what they go to. But I don't dare throw a key away because there's a lock that goes to it somewhere. Unless I had to cut the lock off. Um, so I've got lots of locks. But anyway, what I did is uh, in order to help stabilize these things, because obviously they're not, they're not mounted to the wall. And I don't want to pull the drawers too far out. 
um, and have it be unstable. And what I did is they're actually connected. I used a piece of, piece of butcher block and where this mount, there was, there was one of these handles on each side and you've got connections, bolt connections. So what I did is I used a piece of angle bracket on, on those connections and those connections and, and mounted a piece of butcher block top and that's my little workspace. And I actually put a drawer here because I've got, that's where I keep all my bits. So the only thing I did not like about this uh, DeWalt 42 inch cabinet, and I'm, I'm assuming that the smaller version of this is the same way. These bottom drawers did not pull out all the way. They had a safety feature that allowed them to only pull out halfway. For example, that drawer would only come out about that far. And it used to piss me off because I couldn't put my tools and equipment down in there, which I no longer use that drawer for that. But I had to take the safety mechanism off. It was a stop. And now they open full extension. But it, originally, it did not operate that way. Okay, so this is probably one of the best things that I ever built for this garage because there was a time in point when I had I had boxes and boxes and boxes of screws and nuts and bolts and washers and I couldn't keep track of anything and what would happen is I would have so much I couldn't find what I needed and I'd run to Home Depot and buy a box of washers and then a week later I'd find the original box that I couldn't find so I ended up with way more than I needed or could ever go through so I finally invested in some of these fastenal boxes. Um, I did not want the plastic ones that you can buy at those big box stores. I wanted something uh, heavy duty. And what I did is I built this entire cabinet. Um, it had to be heavy duty because there's a lot of weight there. Some of these boxes are filled with nearly 60 pounds worth of nuts and bolts and screws. And so this cabinet had to be able to support at least a thousand pounds. And I don't know if you can see underneath, but I've got some leveling feet that I've got on there. And so I could level the whole cabinet because I do have this slope in my garage, like most garages have. Um, and the roller bearing slides that are actually uh, holding all of these boxes are actually 200 pound, 200 pound capacity slides, full extension. So, and everything is oak. Uh, so this is what I did. Basically, I made a tray that this box sits on. Now, when you take out the plastic insert, there are screws holding this down. It's not gonna slide off that. Here's an example of what I've got down inside of there. Now, what I started to do was put these labels because I bought a label gun and I kind of went crazy. But after a while, I stopped doing this. And the reason why is because sometimes I'll run out of a certain type of screw and I'll change it to something else. Uh, for example, these one and a quarter inch fine thread screws, I never use them. So at some point, I'll probably chunk those uh, or use them on a project and I just won't replace them. So I stopped doing the labels. But this is a good example of uh, how I was able to organize everything so that I could find stuff. Here's another one. This is my machine bolts. Okay, as you can see, I mean, that, that drawer alone is really heavy. Um, and what I did, so that that way this thing would never tip over, is on the back side, the actual back panel of this cabinet is three quarter inch plywood. That's not quarter inch. And so what I did is I, I screwed it into this workbench that I built. So it's never going to tip over. It's physically impossible. So that way I can open up multiple drawers and have 500 pounds of weight on the front end and it's never going to tip over because this would really hurt somebody if it fell over. Um, washers, nuts. As you can see, I'll never go through all of this in a lifetime. A lot of this is left over from projects that I've done. And if I need something, I can just go in here and find it. I don't have to run to Home Depot or Lowe's. Look at all the anchors that I have. This really helps out to have it organized and separated. It saves me a lot of time. Now these fastenal boxes were not cheap. They are pretty expensive. Here's another drawer, rubber and plastic. 
this is a good idea to separate stuff like this. Okay. So again, this was one of the best um, weekend, I, well, I shouldn't say weekend project because it actually took me about a week to build um, and I had to order the slides. But this is a really good project for any shop or garage to have. Um, and I actually have more of these fastenal boxes, but I, I decided against building a third row. Um, and I, I probably should have because I do have more stuff to go in there, but I have two empty drawers down there that I haven't even filled yet. So this is the drawer that I have my wood putties and stains. I do a lot of cabinet work. So that's a good place to put this stuff. Um, miscellaneous parts, nails and staples. There you go. I don't have a whole lot of nails or staples. I don't use this stuff very often. So stuff that I use a lot of. There we go. I have a lot of self-tapping as well because I do a lot of metal work. Here's the self-tapping screws. Look at all that. I, I'll never go through all that, ever. I'm probably going to die and somebody is going to be uh, just doing backflips because I left this thing to them. Because I, I'll never be able to go through all that stuff in my lifetime. But anyway, wanted to show you that. All right, so let's talk about my Miller Millermatic 211 MIG welder. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to pull it out because I have to open the garage door and pull this uh, Can-Am out of the way, and it is raining like hell outside right now. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do it from a distance. This Millermatic uh, MIG welder was probably the smartest uh, welding uh, piece of equipment that I could buy because it's compact, um, it runs off of 110 or 220, um, and it, you can use the, uh, the gas, is, it, you know, you can shield your, your, uh, your wire with gas. I do have oxygen and acetylene, and I've got some Victor um, gauges, and I've got a, a Victor torch, but I'll tell you what, and right now it's just kind of sitting on top of a Husky rolling tool cart. I have yet to build a really good cart to hold my bottles and to hold all my tools and equipment. Uh, but I'll tell you what, you know, for doing miscellaneous welding, this, I've used this thing a bunch and I'll tell you what, I, I am really, really happy with it. Um, you know, for just a garage guy that's not a welder by trade, this was perfect. I didn't need a stick welder. I didn't want to buy something that was, that was five grand. Uh, I think this thing cost me like 1200 bucks which is still a lot of money. Um, it took me a long time to, to, to actually pull the trigger and, and buy this thing, but I'm glad I did because it's all I need. Uh, something else that's behind this mask here, that Evolution chop saw. <laughs> I'm old school. I, I grew up uh, using a standard chop saw. In fact, I had a DeWalt that used the the uh, the abrasive wheel to cut metal and it just threw sparks everywhere and it was so freaking loud and I watched some YouTube videos and I saw this evolution and it uses a saw blade basically almost like a sliding compound miter saw and I couldn't believe my eyes so I bought that and it wasn't cheap either but let me tell you something I can cut through solid steel like butter I mean it's incredible let me show you what one of the blades looks like. I've got another one over here. There's an evolution blade right there. Now they make these blades, first of all, are made in Japan. Okay. And they have one for aluminum. This is for specifically for cutting aluminum and they have one for steel and they have one for stainless. Um, and they're not cheap. Each blade is about a hundred and I think I paid 120 bucks or 150 bucks per blade. So they're expensive, but it's, it's a, uh, let me see what size is it? It's a 14 inch blade. So it's a big blade. Um, but I want to show you something. Look at this. I've got a hunk of steel here. That hunk of steel right there that I use. Let me see that thing. Jesus. I think that thing probably weighs 80 pounds. I could cut through that with that evolution saw like it, it was a piece of balsa wood. I mean, 
it just cuts so, so perfect. And it doesn't throw any sparks and the metal's not hot. It doesn't start glowing cherry red. So that Evolution saw was really a good buy. Um, so for anybody who's wanting to cut pipe or angle iron or anything else, um, you know, think about that Evolution saw. Do some research on YouTube and check it out because that's a good buy too. So that together with my Millermatic 211 um, was a smart buy for anybody who's not a big time welder for somebody who's just doing small projects in the garage like me. Okay, here's something else that I invested in. You know, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I, I don't have insulation on this in this garage. So not only does it get uh, like an oven in here during the summer months, but in the winter time, it's freaking cold in here. And I don't like to be out here in a beanie cap and wearing my Carhartt jacket. I, I gotta have it comfortable. And this little uh, heater element right here really does the job. It was only like, I don't know what it was, a hundred bucks on, on Amazon. There's different brands, but they're all the same. It runs off at 220. Um, and believe it or not, my electrical bill did not skyrocket like I thought it would. But it has a thermostat on it, okay? And it'll automatically, you set it, and it'll automatically turn on and off. So that way it's not constantly running and it'll keep this garage at a constant temperature. And that was a really smart buy for a 20 by 20 garage. Um, this is all you need. I've had the Dewalt battery powered propane activated uh, forced air heater. And I'll tell you what, I went through so much propane. Um, this is the way to go. The only catch is you gotta have 220 in your garage and you can see the massive cord going through there. I did not have 220. I had to have an electrician because I don't like messing with my electrical panel. Um, and I had him put this in. I had him put an extra two gang box right here and, and a plug. So that's my plug for the heater. So adding that to keep this place comfortable um, was, was critical and I'm so glad I did it. I, I went like three years without that thing and I finally got it and thought, Jesus Christ, Mike, you should have done this a long time ago. So for anybody who's got a two car garage and just needs some heat and doesn't want to have to be uh, investing in propane bottles twice a week, this is the way to do it. Here's another thing that I upgraded to that was really a smart idea was this rigid wall mount shop vac. Now, again, I'm old school. I've had that uh, wet, dry shop vac that rolls around on casters and it was always in the damn way. This model, I don't know which one it is, but it's basically a square shape and it has a mounting bracket for it and it just hangs on the wall. And what I did is I bought some of this flexible hose. I found it on Amazon and it's 75 feet long. And I can turn that thing on and run it all the way out the garage door and out into the driveway and vacuum out my truck and my wife's car without having this thing anywhere, you know, in the way. So I like having it tucked up on the wall. This is the way to go. Now, yeah, I could have bought a commercial style of, uh, of vacuum, but I needed a quote unquote shop vac is what I wanted. And this suits my needs. Now, what I also did is I got some remotes. There is a remote here that's wireless. So where this thing plugs in, it goes over the cabinet and it comes down and it's plugged in. Uh, the remote for it is right there. There it is. So every time I hit this remote, so I can take this with me out to the truck and vacuum it, vacuum the, the, the truck out. And when I'm done vacuuming, I don't have to walk all the way back in to shut it off up top. All I do is take this or I have it in my pocket. And I also bought this for my dust right collection system. There's the, there's the controller right there. So this really works out good. I forgot um, what brand that is. I can't read it. I don't, ha I don't have my glasses on, but I got them on Amazon and those are really smart to have too. So you don't have to be, for me especially, because if I'm operating the saw, I don't want to be climbing over the damn four-wheeler to get to the switch. So anyway, that's that. Okay, I also have an air filtration system that's hanging up uh, off the ceiling. Now, these things, they're a dime a dozen. You find them all over the internet on, and on Amazon. 
And this one happens to be a win. It's made in China. They're well, they're all made in China, no matter what it says. Even the ones that are from Jet are also made in China. And they're basically the same damn model. They just change the sticker on it depending on what uh, what brand it is. And basically this thing turns on different speeds. Um, and it also has a remote and this remote can, you can set the time on it. It'll shut off after an hour or after two hours or after four hours. And I like having the remote, but this is really handy. And I'll tell you what it's handy for. It's not necessarily handy for the dust. It's handy for when I'm grinding, when I'm doing metal work and I'm grinding and welding, that pleated filter right there will get black. I mean like jet black. So I got to think about that. I'm breathing all that crap into my lungs. Um, I don't have a problem with dust because I have a dust collection system, but when I'm grinding metal, even if I'm out in the driveway, somehow that stuff floats in, in here in the garage, even with the garage door open, and that thing will catch a lot of it. So these things are cheap. I don't even know what I paid for it, maybe a hundred bucks, but I think every garage, whether you work with wood or metal, you should have one of those hanging from your ceiling. And I plan to make a, a better one. Uh, but again, I, I just don't have any floor space for a nice big uh, rolling uh, air collection system or filtration system. So that was cheap. I got that on Amazon, but everybody should have one of those.